that's my kind of pain point. <laughs> I don't know why I'm still stuck up on it. Um, is there anything you could share with us, like how you did it, like in practical terms? I mean, we, we learned in, um, in theoretical terms that you have to control your positions and you have to try to simulate. But like in practical terms, do you use Excel? Did you, what did you use? Like how, did, how often did you do it? Yeah. How did you control your risk? Um, look, this is, um, this is something, uh, you know, obviously you recall uh, you were part of the earlier seminar and we spent a fair amount of time on uh, risk management. Um, so it's not really on the agenda for this seminar. Um, uh, um, so uh, uh, I'm going to give you a brief answer and uh, I'm happy to talk about it offline um, and uh, suggest to other people who really want to do a deeper dive into some of the investing topics um, to join our next webinar, our Lessons from the Trenches Bootcamp. Where, uh, where it's a really core part of the curriculum. Um, but generally speaking, no, uh, Excel, um, any, uh, uh, I, I'm not a believer in any kind of like, you know, computer tool or anything like that. Risk management is 98% is, is judgment. Um, and it's not like, it's something you do every single day. You have to live it and breathe it every day. It has to be in your DNA, uh, I believe. So. Uh, so it just means what is risk management? Risk is, is it's partly a volatility issue, but it's primarily risk of permanent loss of capital. Um, but, but sometimes volatility can cause permanent loss of capital. So you have to think about that as well. But uh, it's looking at your portfolio and thinking about how does this portfolio perform on a, uh, there, it's a stock by stock risk assessment, but very importantly, it's an overall portfolio risk assessment and thinking, you know, okay, what happens in a non-complacent, non-bull market? Um, because, you know, so many uh, uh, young people have only have experience, um, uh, you know, in this kind of bull market environment. Uh, but, you know, uh, I have a message for all you young people. Sometimes markets go down and sometimes buying the dip uh, leads to enormous, uh, uh, enhanced, massive capital losses, right? Uh, so sure. thinking, thinking very carefully about each individual position and what can go wrong um, and how much could you lose if you're wrong on each individual position. And then um, equally importantly, thinking every day about the entire portfolio and where are their correlations. And keep in mind in downturns, everything correlates. Things you don't think are correlated, correlated in 2008, right? Uh, sure. so thinking, uh, and then, and, but then that's, it's easy to identify, you know, risk. It's much harder to mitigate that risk. Um, you know, I was, uh, see, the problem is the dilemma is for the last nine years, I was very risk averse. I kept fearing another 2008. So I kept preparing my portfolio at any given point in time. We were always prepared for a storm, but the problem is, is in preparing for that storm, I was holding 30% cash. I had a 20, 30% short book. And those two things cost me dearly. In other words, there was a very high cost to my risk management in that I badly trailed a bull market and it ended up putting me out of business. So that's- I feel, you, I feel like you did the right thing. I mean, everybody else who's a smart money manager is in the same position with you. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, Angelo Martorell, like what he's doing for me, it's like super scary. And I don't know who invested with him, to be honest. Like, yeah. Well, the people invested with him I mean, are real happy right now, you know? Like, yeah, right now. <laughs> I think there's some balance uh, between I was uh, very hesitant to put on risk. Uh, maybe 2008 scarred me so much um, that I, that, you know, living through that was so uh, painful that, uh, that it, it, it affected my brain and my thinking going forward. Maybe it was the fact that I was managing most of my parents' retirement money and basically every single bit of my own money other than my apartment uh, was in my own fund. And that made me too risk averse. So one of the things, by the way, I'm doing in my new SMA businesses is, is it's going to be a hundred percent. It's going to be a Whitney's best long ideas portfolio, hundred percent long, only five to 10 stocks. And that's it. That I think I can do well. And I think I can beat the S and P 500 doing that, but I'm not positioning it to my investors and I'm not telling myself that this is, you know, this is going to be a riskier portfolio. If the market goes down 20%, my fund's probably going to go down somewhere around 20%. That's what 100% long only concentrated portfolio tends to do. Um, so I'm not gonna put 100% of my money into uh, my, my new fund. I'm not gonna put the majority of my parents' retirement money. I'm only gonna put 10 or 20% in this fund and that's fine. I'm gonna manage risk in the rest of my life, the rest of my portfolio, you know, by holding cash and, and other uh, you know, non-equity investments. 
Thank you very much.